Hello students. So today I am going to take up time and tense part 2. Now we will begin with simple past tense. Simple past tense is used to indicate a definite time. So when a definite time is intended, for example, I lost my pen yesterday. Then we use simple past when we know a definite a particular time. For repeated or habitual actions in the past, then again we use simple past. For example, last year we went to the cinema every Sunday. For repeated or habitual actions in the past can also be expressed by used to infinitive. We can also use the terms used to. For example, we used to write a composition every week. For past continuous tense. Now, it is used in order to indicate an action going on when another one took place. For example, I was listening to the radio when the phone rang. So, while well, I was listening, then at that time another activity took place or another action took place. Then, the second activity could be replaced by a point in time. For example, I was listening to the radio at 8 o'clock. Either you can replace by another activity or by the point in time. It can also be used to indicate the two actions were taking place at the same time. For example, Mohan was reading while Anita was writing. We can also say the students in the class, next class were making a noise while we were reading. Next to emphasize that an activity was continuous over a certain period. If you want to show that an activity continued over a time period, then we, we use expressions like all day, all the morning. For example, I was working hard all last week. The gardener was cutting grass whole of yesterday afternoon. Next. To show disapproval using a word like always. For example, they were always asking for favors. Now here you are trying to show disapproval with by using the word always. He was always disturbing me at home. Now we come to the past perfect. Now the past perfect tense. This tense is best understood if it is called the before tense. So we can also call it bef the before tense. Means an event which happened before an event in the past. That is called past perfect. Children remember an event which happened before an event in the past. Alright. For example the lesson had begun when we arrived. So, when we arrived is a past. So, an, an event which had taken place before this past event, that was the lesson had begun. Now, like the past continuous tense, uh, this tense is used far too often, you know, by the students, certain students. And it is not often that we wish to convey the idea of one event happening before another. And for this reason, we do not use this tense frequently. But somehow certain uh, students tend to use this too often. But we don't use it very frequently. Because we don't want to convey the idea of one event happening before another. Sometimes it is clear that one event occurred before the other without using the past perfect. Alright, for example, if we want to say that um, now the lesson had same sentence, you can take the lesson had begun when we arrived. Now in this sentence, the past perfect is necessary to make it clear that the order of, order of events was first the beginning of the lesson and then our arrival. So children, 
This tense is used with a point of time in the past to show that the event occurred before that point. Now example could be, by 2 o'clock he had read most of the novel. Alright? Another example could be, uh, in 1986 he had been employed as a clerk for 10 years. Alright, so point of time 1986 is there before you tell about the past event. Now we come to past perfect continuous which is quite an unimportant tense comparatively compared to the other tenses. And it is used when we wish to indicate that an event happened before another event in the past and the event was continuous. For example, we had been waiting for half an hour when the other team arrived or you can also say he had been working for that company for 10 years when he was promoted so but it's quite an unimportant tense we generally do not use this now we come to the future tense the last of all the tenses and my dear children the future tense yes in future tense you have heard of I shall and I will and these indicate future tense and a future tense is used to denote time, intention, act of will, determination and promise. For example, I shall go tomorrow. Now shall here indicates the future intention without determination. There is no determination in the word shall. It means that I shall in future I'm trying to say that I will go tomorrow I shall go tomorrow but there's no determination but when we say I will go tomorrow that shows determination so future can be also expressed by going to plus infinitive if there's an idea of intention or certainty if you are certain or we have a will or an intention to do it, then we can say going to. We are going to have dinner at 8 o'clock. Then a future idea is also conveyed by verbs as are to, intending, want and promise. For example, he intends to buy a fan. I promise to return the book. Or do you want to buy a fan? Now all three are conveying our future idea or the future intention that he intends his intention is to buy a fan and my I promise means I intend to return the book and whether you intend to buy a fan or not so once again future tense denotes time intention act of will determination shall denotes future intention but no determination will shows determination going to show certainty and similarly there are other verbs as in tense, promise, want and so on. Now the future continuous tense, it is used for an activity or a state which begins before or continues after a point of future time. For example, he will be flying across the Sahara at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So it began before, it will continue after a point of future time. It can be used to indicate that an activity or a state will be going on over a period of future time. They are more or less the same. I shall be working in the laboratory tomorrow morning. To show an event that has been definitely planned for the future, we are definite, certain. In this case, we'll say she will be joining Delhi University in July this year. That means there is a certainty that she will be joining. And in the first sentence, it is showing that will be flying, will be doing it after a point of future time. Now we come to future perfect. It indicates that a point of future time, an event will be in the past. So by 10 o'clock, he will have been here two hours. 
means by the time it is 10 o'clock he would be here it would be two hours of his being here then you will have finished that novel tomorrow again this indicates a, you know that uh, at a point of future time that is by tomorrow uh, an event will be the already will have been taken place that is you will have finished reading that novel tomorrow by tomorrow okay so uh, this is all for time and tense part 2 I hope children you will link the two together time and tense part 1 and part 2 and go through both the videos once again to understand the usage of tenses in fact the correct usage of tenses thank you